of sexual dysfunction, a big one that hits men, I think you'll find, isn't that true, Dennis? But men have had prostate cancer surgery. This is the big one. So, Joe, let's uh, find out why the pelvic floor muscle is so important in regarding to maintain that intimacy and desire. Well, thanks, Alan. The, uh, not many people actually know, but the muscles of the pelvic floor are heavily involved in erectile function. So we have um, three major muscle muscles there, um, bulbocavernosum, as it was called, and bulbospongiosum, and another one called ischiocavernosum. So basically they're a group of muscles within the pelvic floor that are all associated with pumping blood through and also pumping um, the ejaculate fluid through. So a normal erection does require um, healthy nerve tissue and healthy blood flow, but also strong muscles. So um, it's really important to know that every time you do your pelvic floor exercises for your continents, you're also going to be recruiting the pelvic floor muscles to sexual um, function. And um, in my own research, I was able to show that the earlier you started working on your pelvic floor muscles prior to a radical prostatectomy, for example, the quicker your um, erectile function also recovered. Um, and we know from research from a lady called Professor Grace Dory from the mid-2000s that if men do three sets of pelvic floor exercises a day and they have um, common conditions like premature ejaculation or just um, reduced performance, they can improve their um, function by 75% or cure themselves of the problem. So um, doing your pelvic floor exercises we're going to go through shortly can really help with these common problems. Um, we're also going to be talking um, about climacteria in a moment, and that's when there's a loss of urine with orgasm. So, again, in the context of prostate cancer, men don't actually have um, any semen being produced anymore, but they may have urinary leakage, and that's um, quite embarrassing. Dennis, I was just going to ask you, is this something that you talk about in your group very much? Um, we don't. We have not talked a lot ab about climacteria and arousal leakage. We have talked about, of course, the sexual function um, and the impact of um, prostate cancer treatment on that function. Um, but we have not talked really. Uh, we had a presentation from a urologist um, a couple of months ago. She did mention climacteria. Um, um, but, you know, very quickly, sort of in passing, if you like. And um, so we haven't gone into it in any depth. That would be uh, my assessment. Okay, well, I'm not surprised because it's often, well, now referred to as the neglected sexual side effects following um, treatment for prostate cancer. Uh, so we'll move on to what prostate cancer actually does now. So the um, typical treatment, so about 80% of men who need treatment for prostate cancer in Australia are actually treated with surgery, so that's removal of the prostate, and that can be done by the open laparoscopic or robotic procedure. And during that treatment, with the prostate removed, um, the support structure of the bladder is also removed, so that's the autonomic or automatic structure. At the base of the bladder, there's also something called the bladder neck or internal sphincter, and then there's the external or urethral sphincter within the pelvic floor. So the surgeons will remove that prostate, however which way they're doing it. Then they'll um, literally draw the bladder down or it drops down via gravity and they'll stitch what is it, whatever's left of the base of the bladder in the bladder neck into the urethral sphincter. And of course that creates a whole situation where suddenly this poor pelvic floor muscle that's for its whole life being supported um, is suddenly doing 100% of the workload. So. Um, as soon as a man becomes upright, the pelvic floor muscles switched into gear. And most men will know after the surgery, if they lie down or sit down, they're not really leaking very much after the initial few days or weeks of the catheter being removed. But long term, they'll tend to leak more when they walk, later on in the day, and um, whenever they do anything that increases their what we call intra-abdominal pressure, that's that downward action where the strength of the pelvic floor is not quite um, developed enough to overcome that um, leakage issues so all of a sudden you have that incontinence arise. Now wrapped around the prostate is a fine bundle of nerves also associated with continence and erectile function and, and then at the base of the prostate is something called the neurovascular bundles and with robotic surgeons they um, have really tried to pioneer a lot more of this nerve sparing technique to 
um, minimise any damage because they can actually see it. It's, it's um, 10 to 12 times magnified compared to the open eye. So we spend a lot of time now trying to educate patients on um, knowing about pelvic floor exercises and um, penile rehabilitation to help recovery of erectile function. That's using things like pumps and um, injections to help the sexual function. So um, overall, we have a lot of impact from having a prostate cancer surgery. Uh, I like to think of it being temporary, but for most men, we would say only as little as 30 to 50% get their sexual function back after two years, but we're uh, more like a 95 to 98% getting their um, continence function back. And then, of course, if we have um, any treatment involving the rectum um, or the prostate with radiation therapy, we can also have that bowel incontinence. Yeah. So altogether, um, prostate cancer uh, treatment can have quite devastating impacts on um, these two sexual and continence functions. But um, we, we know that we're all getting better. We're all trying to commence these preoperative trail pelvic floor training programs, um, improving people's fitness, reducing their weight, and um, getting quickly into these rehabilitation programs following the surgery. Well, that takes us into the uh, slide I've just flipped up there for everyone. It's the radiation side effects. But just before we jump into that, Joe and Sharon, I've had an interesting question come in. That, uh, Chris asked, what's the percentage of post-prostatectomy patients would you see that experience fecal incontinence? Post-surgical um, uh, prostatectomy, um, that on its own, very, very little. I've never um, seen one. I've, I don't think I've seen one either. The, the patients that I have seen have uh, um, normally undergone um, radiotherapy for either um, residual disease or have chosen um, radiotherapy as their, their um, primary treatment. So, but surgically, not, not any, actually. And I would say the same in, yeah. yeah. So the, the radiation side effects uh, seem to be inconsistent. I think I've talked to men over the years and some of them have some side effects, Dennis, and some don't. Is that your? Yeah, um, we have yeah. a number of men in my group who've had radiation. Some of them have had multiple, um, lots of radiation spread over yeah. many years. Um, some of them seem to have very little in the way of side effects. Others are, are affected quite significantly by it. Um, I can only think of one, however, who, while having radiation, experienced an increase in incontinence. And I don't know, I can't say for sure whether it was solely due to the radiation or there were other factors involved as well in his um, physiology and in his treatment. But um, yes, the, as with um, just about everything to do with prostate cancer, every man is different mm. and the side effects are different and they, they hit us differently. So it's very difficult to generalise about this. Yeah, I think yeah. Dennis has raised an important point, whether it's, uh, whether it's to do with uh, radiation or surgery, it depends on your health and well-being, the skill of the people involved and just how the body repairs itself. So it, it's a bit of a... Uh, very much grey area.